Fellowship is that place. I'm going to get, get into the Bible soon. Just bear with me. Fellowship is that place. Fellowship is not meant for you to come to God and just say everything you want to say and get out. Are you with me? Fellowship is the place of learning. Fellowship is the place whereby the Holy Spirit teaches us. Fellowship is the place whereby the Holy Ghost touches us. There can't be any fellowship until the Holy Spirit is involved. Whatever you had without the Holy Spirit was just a monologue. Are you with me? It was just a one-way talk. For any fellowship to occur, there has to be what? Two persons. Are you with me? Two persons. The word fellowship comes from a Greek word we all know, koinonia. Koinonia means fellowship, but it also means what? Intimacy. Are you with me? Intimacy. We are all mostly adults here. Are we? There's no child. I remember something. <laughs> I, I attended the boarding school for one year. And there was this, you know, back then um, in Nigeria, you have um, GSS1 to GSS3. That's, um, how do you call it in Ireland here? Um, first, is it first class, first year, yeah, thirty, and then people, f and then we have SS one to SS three, so that will be from like um, fourth year to sixth year, right? And I was in obviously in GSS one, I was in first year, and in where I where I was, um, you know, the dormitory where I stayed, um, I had this, I was sleeping on a bunk. And I had this um, senior, she was, sleep, she was on, um, sleeping on the under, uh, the under bed. And she was always fond of saying this thing. She said, don't spoil me. Because, you know, I, if, how many of you went to boarding school? Yeah, no. no what? How many? No hands up. Two hands. Okay. Praise the Lord. You know, there's a lot of things that happen. Praise the Lord. There's a lot. So you see seniors talking and everything there you know a lot going on so they're even talking about things that should not be talked about so when they are talking those things that shouldn't be talked about this senior will say don't spoil me amen but it was a joke are you getting the are you getting the gist don't spoil me so i'm saying can we can we talk right so when we talk about intimacy I think what comes to our mind is about a husband and his wife. Glory to God. Not a boyfriend and a girlfriend. Amen? Amen? Praise the Lord. Mar in sex is only permitted within the confines of marriage. God only gave allowance for sex within where? Marriage. Glory to God. So, intimacy is very well depicted when we look at into a relationship between a man and his wife are you with me are you with me so when they become into there are, there are many um streams of intimacy but one of them which we all see and we say mm, is when they what give birth to a child but that child was not it, the child didn't just, didn't just pop up did it they became what intimate how are you guys looking at me as saints? <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Even me, I'm too young. <laughs> Praise the Lord. They became intimate. And the fruit of that intimacy is what? That child. So there is no time that we fellowship with the Holy Spirit that there won't be a fruit to attest to the fact that we have been intimate with him are you with me and the fruit of our intimacy is actually part of the things God has provided for us as his sons as his daughters the help you need the wisdom you need the grace you need everything comes as what a result of what intimacy 
Because God has already given the Holy Spirit charge over the earth as it stands right now. So God has put the whole world under the control of the Holy Spirit. Everything that God is going to do upon the earth in this time, in this season, till the return of Christ will be through the what? The ministry of the Holy Spirit. So any believer that is not hooked up, connected, in sync, in fellowship with the Holy Spirit would live by the barest minimum. So that leaves us with no other choice than to what? To become intimate with him. Are you with me? To become intimate with him. Because without intimacy, we can't see his fruit in our lives. We can't see his help. We can't see his wisdom. We can't see his ability that work in us. Are you with me? Because when two people come together and become intimate, there is always what? A fruit. Glory to God. Glory to Jesus. Now, let's go to John chapter 14. John chapter 14. We will have it projected up there for those that don't have their Bibles. John chapter 14. Glory to God. If you're there, when you're there, you say amen. Glory to Jesus. Now, when Jesus was about to leave the world, at least from what we see in the Bible, he began to speak more about the Holy Spirit, more about the Holy Spirit, you know, because he knew his time was up. And the next person that was going to come on the scene was who? The Holy Ghost. So he spoke much more. When you read, if you want to know more about the Spirit of God from the lips of Jesus, John chapter 14, chapter 15, and chapter 16. Now, we're seeing John chapter 14. I'll read from verse 16, okay? Jesus speaking, he says, let's start from 15. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall send you another comforter. That he may abide with you forever. Do you see that? Another comforter. So that word there used, another, um, the root, I guess the root Greek word, you know, when we think about another, it doesn't mean someone different, but of the same kind. Alos, not heteros. Alos, of the same kind. So, the Holy Spirit of, is of the same kind like Jesus. That he may what? Abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot what? Receive. Because it sees him not, neither knows him. But you know him. For he dwells with you and shall be in you. Verse 18. He said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Now, I, I looked up. Um, this, the Bible that Pastor Ruben gave me is very beautiful. So I looked up um, the root word of that word comfortless. It comes from the Greek word orphanos, meaning orphans. So he said, I will not leave you what? As orphans. I will come to you. He said, yet a little while, and the world sees me no more, but you see me, because I need you shall live also. Glory to God. Now let's go to verse 26. He said, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Glory to God. Glory to Jesus. So this is what, these are, these are the very words of Jesus. When Jesus was introducing the person of the Holy Spirit. He said, I will send you another, not a different, of the same kind. The, someone that is like me. Someone that comforts like me. Someone that teaches like me. Are you with me? The spirit of truth. And he will teach you all 
things. And he will bring all things to you. Remember that what? I have told you. Glory to God. So, how do we foster or, you know, build that fellowship that we need with the Holy Spirit? Because without it, it's as if we were orphans. Are you with me? Are you with me? But because God has given us his spirit, we are not what? Orphans. Say, I'm not an orphan. You see, an orphan has to take care of himself. I think it's a very painful thing not to have parents. Do you concur with me? Praise the Lord. Imagine growing up by yourself, trying to figure out life by yourself. People may take advantage of you. And th that is why some people that grow up by themselves, they, be, they could be very self-defensive. Do you know that? Because sometimes people take advantage of their status. If you're a girl, for example, you don't have dad, you don't have mom, in some parts of the world, you know, people will say, exchange your, your body. I'll give you money if you give me your body. Do you get me? So it's a very vulnerable situation to be in, to be an orphan. An orphan is without provision. You have to think for yourself. You have to, you know, go through life by yourself. But God said, I will not leave you what as orphans. Amen. Verse 18. I will come to you. Isn't that a great word? Do you concur with me? Isn't that a great word? So why do we need to live as orphans? Deprived of God's provision. Deprived of God's help. Deprived of God's leading. Of God's strength. If he has already given us the spirit. Which is a proof that we are his son. So we are not what? Orphans. Why should we? Glory to God. So how do we foster? How do we move? How do we activate this fellowship that is needed with the Holy Spirit? The rule is recognition. I go back to this thing. I'm going to speak for the recognition. Faith is not just believing in the, oh, in, in the vague. Ha, oh, yeah, yeah, God, God, God. Faith is definite. Are you with me? Faith is what? God said it. He didn't mince words. He meant it. And I believe it. So recognition comes from that place. Are you with me? When you begin to recognize something, you, be, you become more conscious of that thing. Recognition also speaks about the value you place on something. Are you with me? Are you with me? So maybe as a student, you see everybody, you know, calling, their, calling your lecturers by name. But because you understand, number one, this person is not even my age mate. Even though you were my age mate. But this person is in a different class. Are you with me? This person is teaching me. I dare not call that person Hey, Miss. Uh, hey, what name would I use now? Hey, hey, hey. Um, give me one Irish name. <laughs> hey, Sean. Hey, for. I don't even know how people do that thing. I can't. Neef. Siobhan. Amen. You can't. And it's not because everybody is doing it that I can do it. Your sense of recognition drives what you do. So because people don't know that this person is not my age mate, number one. Number two, this person is my teacher, my lecturer. So there is that gradient, there is that, um, there is that um, dif differential there. So as a result of that, I have to give respect. Now, I know they will say, oh, no, don't worry. Don't call me by that. Just call me, Sean. Just, no. It's not even about them. Are you with me? If you go to proper corporate setting, they address people by their titles. Are you with me? They say, hi, Dr. Sean. Hi. They address people. That is how it works. 
Because that could, that could actually define whether you will get or miss an opportunity. You can have the same qualification with somebody, have the same carriage, but if you don't have the same sense of value, that will bring a differential. Are you with me? Okay? So, recognition is knowing this is who this person is. This is who the Holy Spirit is. I am aware that God sent him into my life because I'm his son. I'm aware that God sent him into my life so that he will lead me because I don't know the way. To help me because I can't help myself. To guide me because I can't guide myself. To strengthen me because there are times, if, you know, I can't even live by my strength. When this recognition dawns on us, fellowship can be initiated. Because fellowship comes from the need you know, of, you know, of, of wanting your needs to be satisfied by the other. You understand that these things that I lack, praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. That this need that I have is only satiable. It's only, it's only met by fellowship with the Holy Spirit. By giving attention to him. Then that is when your what fellowship can be possible. So I'll give us one and I'm going to close. That will be the one example. We'll continue next week by God's grace. Praise the Lord. Are you with me? Are you with me? Let's not be distracted. I will just touch on one point and we close. He said, but the comforter which the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, will, he will teach you all things and bring all things to you. Remember, whatsoever I have said unto you. Okay? Now, this is the one example I will give. When you understand him as my teacher, that means outside of him, I'm foolish. I want to try to paint a very, you know, vivid picture on our minds. Outside of him, I am foolish. Outside of him, I'm limited. Outside of him, I'm ignorant. And as long as I'm ignorant, the devil will be capable of winning certain aspects of my life. So it leaves me with no other choice but to submit to what? His teaching. So I give us a very practical one. Practical. You see the Spirit of God as your teacher. You open the Bible. I'm giving this because we all, we all have a Bible, whether online, whether physical. You have a Bible. But what makes the Bible powerful is not because you are just reading it. What makes it powerful is because you have the teacher with you. What makes the, the Bible capable of bringing a change in our life is because the Holy Spirit is teaching us. Because the Bible said that holy men were moved. To write these things as, you know, they were moved by the Holy Ghost to write these things that we are reading. Peter said so. Are you with me? So when he comes and teaches you, he doesn't teach you logically. Are you with me? Just as though you're in a classroom. And I, I want you to please um, hold this um, analogy very close to your heart. You don't enter a classroom with a lecturer there. The reason why we go for lectures is because we expect the teacher to know more than us, right? They are experts in their field.